Hello and welcome back to the Waffle Free Storytelling Podcast. It's Tina Constant here and as usual, the waffle is in the show notes. So without further ado, here's another brand new story by me for you. But before we meet Gilliman, here's a thing you need to remember. Just about everything we take as absolutely normal today like deceit and lying, corruption, hate, love, desire, the misuse of power. It was all, at some point in the history of the universe, a new thing. Everything had to be made. There's always a beginning. Take the birth of hope, for instance. Here's what really happened. Now, this all took place back in a time when the world was exceedingly young, and was ruled by the whims and moods of the fickle gods, dragons, and things that we take as wild fantasy today. The people who populated the world in that time, though, lived in close communities and did the very best they could to survive. It wasn't easy. It seemed that everything that surrounded them was out to hurt them or slow them or hinder them, and they weren't wrong. Now, part of their survival toolkit, so to speak, included finding each person's gift and letting them do that to the very best of their ability. So, for instance, if someone showed a natural inclination to sing, they would sing and would never be made to stoke the blacksmith's fires. And on the other hand, if there was someone with a profound skill for forging steel, well, they would never be expected to write sonnets, and so on. Now, in this village, Gilliman was no exception except that her skill was quite unique. Gilliman had the ability to find and get whatever people wanted and needed, no matter how hard. If the blacksmith wanted a certain type of heat for his fires, Gilliman would say, I can do it, and she would get it for him. If the medicine woman wanted a new cure for an infection, Gilliman would say, I can do it, and she would. If the musician was after a very specific sound, Gilliman would say, I can do it. And a new reed was found that produced exactly that sound. So it was that everyone contributed to the community based on their natural gifts, which led to two things. One, people became deeply skilled at their craft. And two, despite the hardships of life at the time, They were happy, and this did not go unnoticed by the spoiled, entitled, bored, petty gods who ran things. Now, Gilliman was still a very young woman when things got bad. The people called it the Great Madness, because nothing made sense. Rain fell everywhere except where it was useful. Night took over in the middle of the afternoon. Snow and then hail and then scorching heat would fall on the village in the matter of hours. Frogs leapt out of fields and animals just vanished into wells. It was as if the gods had focused on this one place with the aim of breaking the souls of the people who lived there. To stay alive, the villagers had to stop doing what they loved to do and start doing whatever it took to survive. At the point when things were almost too difficult to bear, the village called a meeting. And knowing Gilliman's skill of getting the impossible done, the meeting was called for her in particular. We need to plead with the gods, the village said, and accept whatever price they demand. But in particular, they said to Gilliman, tell them at least to give us night and day back as they were. That is, after all, a basic human right. Now, for the first time in her life, Gilliman doubted her ability to fulfil the request. The only way she could achieve something like this was to get an audience with the gods themselves. The young woman was about to say she couldn't get it done, but the need, the trust and the fear in people's faces moved her to stand straight and stand strong. I can do it, she said. Now some would say that that was the seed of hope planted right there, but they'd be wrong. What it was was a great deal of optimism, misplaced at that. But like a hot burning flame, Gilliman gave that optimism to the village, packed a small bag and left. 
Now word of Gilliman's mission spread across the land and soon reached the ears of the gods. At first they were stunned at her audacity. Then they laughed. They looked down at her and decided that this foolish human needed to be reminded of her place. We'll give her hurdles, they said, and impossible tasks. We'll let her get close. The gods huddled together and hatched a plan. Then we'll crush her. And so it happened that Gilliman became a toy. It all started when she met the nymph of the green meadows, who told Gilliman that an audience with the gods was assured. All she had to do was follow detailed instructions to steal an egg from the great dragon and deliver it to the gods as a gift. Now Gilliman was unsure of the nymph, but the nymph said it would be easy. The dragon will be asleep. Crawl under her belly, take an egg, and run. If you get to the gates before she catches you, you will be safe. So following the instructions, Gilliman found the dragon and found the eggs. And as the nymph said, the dragon was asleep. Not wanting to cause the great beast too much distress, Gilliman crept under her scaly belly, studied each one of the eggs and found the coldest one, the one with no life inside. Gilliman gripped the egg and ran from the lair just as the dragon woke. She bellowed and she roared. She chased Gilliman out of the cave, but no further. Gilliman glanced over her shoulder to see the dragon watching her go. Clutching the egg, Gilliman accepted her luck and ran and ran and didn't stop until in the distance she saw the gates. If she could make it to the gates, she'd be safe, and she was so close. But she was not twenty strides from the gates when a pack of dogs appeared. They snatched the egg. Gilliman turned to the dogs. How dare you! Give that back! That is a gift for the gods! The leader of the pack grinned. We will give you half the egg back if you give us one of your arms. Gilliman thought for a while. Would half an egg be enough to get an audience with the gods? The dogs yipped and howled. Definitely. What choice did Gilliman have? If she wanted to get through the gates, then she'd have to give them what they wanted. So she took half the egg and let the dogs chew off an arm. Gilliman turned back to the gates, but she didn't have time to take three steps before an eagle swooped down and took the half egg. It hovered just above Gilliman's head, tantalizingly out of reach. I will give you half of this egg, said the eagle, in exchange for one of your eyes. Gilliman was so close. She couldn't quit now. So many people were relying on her. But she wasn't sure if a quarter of the egg would be enough for the gods. The eagle said he knew the gods well. And yes, a quarter of a dragon's egg would be plenty. So Gilliman let the eagle peck out an eye in return for what was left of the egg. Struggling now, Gilliman fumbled the final steps, gripping what was left, determined not to let go. But just as she touched the gates, a cobra slithered out of the grass and swallowed her prize. Gilliman cried out, Why are you doing this? I followed the rules. I did everything you said. What more do you want from me? The snake coiled itself around Gilliman and squeezed until she could hardly breathe. We want you to admit defeat. We want you to know your place. We want you to accept your lot. We want you never to look up, never to strive beyond what we have decided you will be. Fast running out of air, Gilliman recalled the faces of her family and her friends, how they were once strong and happy. She drew in her last breath. No, she said, some things I will not do. 
Gilliman dug her hand and her feet into the coils. She kicked and she shoved. She opened her mouth wide and she bit into the back of the cobra's head. Then she reached down into the snake's stomach, pulled out the dragon's egg and ate it herself. The cobra screamed, loosened its coils and vanished into a mist, leaving Gilliman cracked and broken in the dust. Meanwhile, high above, the gods were astonished. Astonished. How is this human still standing? They decided to let her in so they could take a closer look. Now, whether it was exhaustion, terror, relief, or joy, no one but Gilliman will ever know, but she laughed. She had an audience with the gods. She had only one arm, only one eye, and a belly poisoned with a dragon's egg. Her clothes were torn and muddy and bloody, her bones were broken, but she made it. You battled your way to the top, said the gods. Why bother when you know we don't want you here? And so Gilliman explained what the village needed. Night and day, she ended. It's a basic human right. A basic right, boomed the gods. You have no rights. Leaving Gilliman stunned and wondering what was going to happen next, the gods huddled together and whispered. All she heard were wicked giggles. All she saw was smirks. Then finally, they came back to her. You need to understand, the gods said. We can't just give you what you want. There must always be a price. If there wasn't, can you imagine the demands that would follow? You would all want in. But we're not unreasonable. You can have night and day back. But half the year will be long days and short nights, and the other half will be all night except for a glimpse of the sun at noon. But that is not all. The gods grinned down on Gilliman. It gave her no comfort. You, they said, have shown audacity beyond your worth. An example must be made of you. The gods gathered Gilliman's broken body into their arms. They blew into her lungs, making her whole again. Then they reached into her heart and filled it with a blinding light. We are sending you back to your people with a curse, they said. From this day on, you will have hope. Everyone you meet, touch or speak to, anyone who ever even hears of you, will get a small part of you. With hope, humans will continue to strive for the impossible. And when they fail, instead of being filled with despair and giving up, they will keep on trying. And they will fail again. And still, the fools will get up and try and try. The gods laughed. They will never know when to stop. They will try until they die, and you, Gilliman, will live for eternity, made to watch people reach the gates of wonder only to fail over and over. Gilliman was distraught. This is madness! The gods roared with delight, and won't that be fun to watch! The gods were just about to dismiss Gilliman when up from the back of the mountain, looming impossibly large and furious, was the great dragon herself. Now the gods feared nothing, but they were weary of the dragon. She had it in her to destroy their mountain, not them perhaps, but certainly their home. They scurried for shelter, knowing that the theft and the destruction of one of her eggs would have angered her beyond measure, even though it had been just a little bit of fun. Gilliman, the dragon, growled. 
You chose the only egg that didn't carry my young. You persevered against all odds. You ate my egg and you still live, which means you have miracles in you. The gods have cursed you, but I will add a blessing to that curse. The gods protested, but the dragon ignored them. If you can spread your hope to enough of your kind, the gods' curse will be broken, and the impossible that people are striving for will be achieved. In the midst of the gods' objections, the dragon lifted Gilliman from the mountain and delivered her back to her village. Now the gods did indeed give the people daylight for half the year and plunge them into darkness for the other half. And because they felt cheated by the dragon, they also made it that no crops would ever grow in the dark months when it was needed most. But the people didn't mind. They had Gilliman back. She embraced everyone she met, passing on hope with every hug. She crossed rivers, mountains and oceans. She circled the globe. Year after year, decades and centuries passed. And she didn't stop. Not for a moment. Not even when the gods sent fire, floods, plagues and fury to break people's spirit and test that hope. And so she continues even to today. Gilliman doesn't know how much hope has to spread before the curse will be broken, but she knows it will. So when you meet someone who makes you believe in a greater, better, stronger, braver, fuller, brighter world, you have probably met Gilliman. Take what she gives you and share it. Because soon, very soon, enough people will have enough hope and they will no longer be trampled, limited, and controlled. They will know their power and their strength, and the reign of the greedy gods on the mountaintops will be done. And that's it from the Waffle Free Storytelling Podcast. For more, drop into the show notes or visit www.tinaconstant.com to say hi. Have a wonderful and a glorious week and I will see you next week with another Coffee Break adventure. Bye-bye now.